and high culture, if you notice, comes ahead. And here I must thank Jonathan for, I had asked him this question a year or two ago. I said, what comes first, culture or politics? Straight away, he shot by his culture, and it's true. Having thought of it profoundly, high culture comes before high politics, because politics without high culture becomes a butcher shop. Mm -hmm. You know, it becomes a power game only. So, spirituality, race, high culture of the elite, High politics. What does high politics mean? High politics means the survival of the ethnic group, the, the race. And our weapon, as I shall discuss later, will be food. We will not bomb Iraqis, as Bush is doing, with cluster bombs and contaminated. We won't do that. The white race is the only race capable of producing a food surplus. And instead of giving billions of dollars or euros to starving nations, we should start using that weapon as high politics. You see, the threat of salvation, as we, as we, as we say, starvation. So, spirituality, race, high culture, high politics, which is using food and territory. Territory means territory means never ceding an inch and ever on the alert to grasp opportunities to increase the imperium. For an imperium is either expanding or dying. So we are to be predators in this vulgar way? Are you mad? I'm not many people. Many. That's all right. I mean, uh, I'm very often called mad. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but so there, yes, but there is some method in the madness, you know. Now, having said all this, this brief resume of what I said today. Let us go forth. How are we going to achieve? There's no avenue left. It's no use. The nationalist formations in every country, including my own, winning an election, even though it's practically impossible. But even if it had to, it won't make a difference because our enemy thinks globally, has the world in his hands, has the world press, Hollywood, radio, all the newspapers of the world. The, the, the Federal Reserve, where he can create artificial depressions and whatnot. We will do it, each in his own little furrow. It's hopeless. The only way is Brussels. That's the weak link. That's the weak link of our enemy. And they have, as I shall explain later on, they are terrified of this plan because they know it what we of Imperium Europa are propounding. They are terrified and taking corrective act, act, action to close this avenue for us. We must hit that Goliath, you see, with one pebble to his brain box. This is it. We have to do it. And the only chance is June 2009, as I shall explain. It's our only chance. We can't miss this. Individual nationalists, however strong they are, will be ground down, weary down. We had Salazar, we had Videla, Papadopoulos in Greece, Pinochet, who knew the enemy very well, just as much as us. You see, they were they all, because they were on their own. And the enemy ganged up everybody against them. So we can't do that. So we've got to get. Brussels. We have to take that shot. Now, I don't know some of you, surely, because you're all well read here, must have read Gailey Simpson's Which Way Was To Go. Anybody who? Right. It's a massive book, 1,000 so many pages. It took me two years to plot through it, and reading other books in the meantime, of course. But, uh, but, he, tackled, but he tackled everything. This, this Gaelic Simpson. He was a Christian, 
found the, that Christianity can never be our true spiritual underpinning and became an Nietzsche, you know, went off to some mountains outside New York, lived alone. So some friend some f from St. Francis to Nietzsche. And he wrote this massive book, yes. He wrote this massive book where he treated every imaginable problem confronting the white man. Everything. He tackled everything. Read it, you'll be surprised at how at the erudition of this man. On the pen in the penultimate page, the penultimate page, check it, you will find this stark confession, admission. I'm quoting verbatim. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps in time, we shall feel the necessity of setting up some sort of tribunal or arbitration that will ultimately go a long way toward making war between German and French, or German and British, or British or German and American, impossible. What a stark admission. After writing a book like that, he is hoping, perhaps, we have, shall have a tribunal. It's nonsense. I'm not writing him down, don't get me wrong. It's on the shoulders of such intellectual giants that we move forward. Mm -hmm. But it's a stark admission. Mm -hmm. We have found the key so that Germans will never fight British, the British again, you see? The French and so on and the other. We have found it, the key. Just a few years after he died, he died in 1991, and the solution is an imperium Europa on a planetary basis, an imperium of regions and peoples, where the nation states will gradually dissolve, and the old regions, Scotland, Wales, Burgundy, Bordeaux, Bordeaux, Lombardia, and here I must take this opportunity to salute our Italian friends from the Lega Lombarda. Benvenuti tra noi, you know, that we welcome you in our midst. It's to the Lega Lombarda that I owe this <coughs> concept of a Europe of regions and peoples. And Maroni, who is the present Minister of the Interior, Maroni, came out with it first, many years ago. Un Europa delle regioni e dei popoli. How wonderful. Where the regions will come into their own and decide, and decide, on their own problems. If the Isle of Man wants to get virgin back, let them have it. So long as they decide in the Swiss manner of direct democracy of the cantonal, of the cantonal, um, cantonal system. Let the people decide, not Brussels, with a one-size-fits-all. This is the problem with the EU. They want a one-size-fits-all. In a sense, they are Maoists all wearing the same uh, no, we're not going to we're going to let the dominion side, the female side the regional side completely free, if a region wants to introduce polygamy let them, why not what does it matter to us let them be if you want to hear the lamentations every morning, quadrophonic from <laughs> from wives from, where are you going to you <laughs> know <laughs> So this is it. We have moved beyond gayisms. We have moved beyond gayisms. Now, how to get there? This is it. Practical politics. How are we going to get to Brussels? We have to either join the mainstream parties, infiltrate them, a little bit of duplicity, let's call it that, or the diplomacy. Infiltrate them. And once we get to Europe, Unite together and form a new group. Nova Europa will come to you. Either through the mainstream parties, in fact, many Italian parties would gladly join our Nova Europa. No, immediately. The Italians are very acute politically. And 